it was devastating. Just having the rug pulled out from under you, you never expect that your child is going to have cancer. I'm Steve, and this is my wife, Ginger McKinnon. We have three wonderful children. Harrison has always been a very energetic kid. He is a kid that loves life. Everyone likes him. He's got a lot of friends. He's a very outgoing kid. Before he got sick, uh, we noticed for a couple of months that he just was not himself, just really lethargic and just not feeling well. So we took him to the pediatrician, just thinking that he had a virus or something. And they sent us immediately to the ER at Wake Med. The ER physician came in and told us they had contacted UNC Oncology. The doctors believed that he was sick with leukemia. Definitely was the worst day of my life, hearing that my child had cancer. So that was the first thing on my mind but still trying to be strong for him so that he wouldn't be scared. Harrison didn't really say much as far as how he was feeling. You know, I think Harrison was very scared and, you know, not knowing what was gonna happen. We were just trying to comfort him as well as be strong for all of our children. So virtually every child that's diagnosed with leukemia starts their treatment the same way, with a, a month period that is intended to induce an initial remission. And about 98 or 99 percent of children with leukemia go into remission within 15 to 28 days. So when Harrison's doctors discovered that he had not gone into remission and that in fact he had as much leukemia in his bone marrow and in his blood after four weeks of treatment as he had when he started, they knew that something was wrong. Harrison happened to be a one percenter. He was that one percent that has a refractory leukemia. And as they began to look at the, the genome, uh, all the way down to the genes that are, were in his leukemia, they found this, this one chromosome transmutation. And as they looked at it, they ran it through their research and through their databases, and they found this article that had been written six months prior by a researcher, found that some 15 to 20 percent of those who don't go into remission had this very same problem with their chromosomes. As a result, he began to look for ways to try to treat in a targeted way that particular chromosome transmutation and he found a, a, a treatment. I never understood what funding for cancer research was about until that moment. And when the doctors explained to us just how much Harrison was on the cutting edge of childhood cancer therapy and childhood cancer treatment, I was amazed. We were sitting in the oncology clinic waiting for our doctors to go actually test the bone marrow themselves. So we waited in the clinic while Dr. Weston looked at the bone marrow under the microscope. We had seen a difference in his stamina and energy level, so we thought that it may be helping, but we weren't sure. The doctor walked in and he said, we have a touchdown. And the entire place erupted in cheers and uh, clapping and doctors and nurses and other patients uh, and parents were hugging one another. It was a remarkable scene. So it was January 24th, 2012 that we found out that he was in remission. Harrison had a wonderful relationship with his sister and his brother before this. But to see the way that they rallied around him, to encourage him and to, to bless him, to be strong when he was weak and uh, when he felt like he couldn't go on, for them to encourage him, to see that happen really brought our family to a new level of closeness, being there for one another. And, and it also helped all of us to see the importance of living every day and living life to the fullest. 
Harrison lived that way, and he continues to live that way, and he's inspired the rest of our family to live that way as well.